Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, non-overlapping intervals. So in this question, we're given a collection of intervals and we need to find the minimum number of intervals you need to remove to make the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. So in order to solve this, let's take, uh, in order to understand this question, let's just look at this example over here. So we're given this as our input. So let me just go over here. So this over here is our input. So we have one, two, two, three, three, four, and one, three. And what one, two means is basically that whatever it is starts at one and ends at two. So we can think of each of these numbers as a time. So let's just draw a timeline per se. So we start off uh, at one, two, three, and four. We can just think as each number representing one hour. So let's draw each of these. So we have one to two. So we start at one and we end at two over here. So that's one of our intervals. The second one is from two to three. So we can just start at two again and go all the way to three. And the third one uh, is three to four. So we start at three, go all the way to four. And over here we have one which is one to three. So we start at one and we go all the way to three. So over here we do have overlapping uh, in this area. Starting from one all the way to three, we have some overlapping. So let's look at two ways of how we can get rid of this overlapping. So one thing we could do is we could remove this over here. So we could remove one to two and we can also remove two to three, right? So by removing that, we're, there's not going to be any overlapping. So over here, we removed two items. Let's look at a second condition. So one other thing we could do, we could just remove this entire interval from one all the way to three. So when we remove that, we don't have any overlapping and we're only removing one element. So this actually is going to be the best solution since uh, this is removing the least amount of intervals. So there's two ways to look at this problem. One is like how the question describes, which is uh, we're going to try to decrease the number of intervals we remove. But another way to look at this question is to think of it as how many intervals can I have without overlapping. So we want to try to have the maximum number of intervals. And let's take a look at how we can get that in the best way possible. So one way we can do that is by looking for whatever has the earliest end time. And the purpose for that is when you find something which has the earliest end time, that is the way we can incorporate the most amount of intervals. The reason for that is because whatever, so if you pick whatever has the earliest end time, that just gives you more time to incorporate other elements. So the end time over here is going to be a major factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort our input over here by the end time. So what do I mean by that? So uh, the end time is going to be the whatever is at the first index, right? So the last element in each list. So we have two, three, four, and three again. So how is this going to look like when we sort it? So we're first going to get one comma two right? Since two is the smallest, mm -hmm. then we're going to get two comma three. And after that, we're going to get one comma three. And the reason for that is because it just maintains the same stability or order as the parent element. And then afterwards we get three comma four. So over here, we arranged it according to our ending times. So what we're going to do is we're going to each time we're going to check whether the opening time of the next element is equal to or greater than the closing time of the previous element. So what I mean by that? So what we're going to do is we're going to maintain an element. Uh, let's call it close. So this is going to hold the closing uh, time. And this is going to start off at negative infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare this, the closing time, with our opening time. So in the beginning, we're going to compare it with the number one. And obviously one is greater. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our closing value to the end time of that list. So what I mean by that is this is now going to become our end time. So now our closing value becomes two. So we're going to repeat that again. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to check if whatever this value is, which is a two, if it's equal to or greater than the closing value. So in this case, it's equal to. So what that means is this is also valid. So in this case, we're again, we're going to uh, change this as our closing period. So our closing, we take it off from two and we change it to this value, which is a three. So now we have three over here. And now we're going to repeat the same steps again. So we're going to go over here 
and check if this opening time is less than, is greater than or equal to the closing time. And it is not. One is less than three. So what that means is we're just going to ignore this uh, element by itself. So we're going to ignore this and we're going to go to our count and we're going to increase it by a value of one. So in the beginning, it was a value of zero. And now we're going to increase it by one, making it one. Right. And the purpose for that is because this uh, opening value is less than this closing value. So we're just going to get rid of this value. So now let's go to our last element over here. And we're going to compare the opening value, which over here is three, to our closing value. And three is equal to three. So in that case, our new closing value is going to become four. And now we reach the ending of, now we iterated through all of our intervals and we're done. And we're going to return the count of one. So hopefully that makes sense. And now let's just go into the code. And if you have any questions, do let me know down in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. So we're going to start off by initializing our two variables. So first I'm going to have the closing variable, which like I said, is going to start off at negative infinity. And then afterwards we're going to have our count. Uh, and this is the value that we're going to return. So I'm going to start off with the, it's going to start off with the value of zero. So now we're going to go inside of a for loop and we're going to iterate through each of the intervals. So for interval in intervals, and we're going to iterate through each of them, but we also need to sort it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sorted intervals. Now the thing with this is it's going to sort everything according to whatever is at the zeroth index, but that's not what we want. We only want to sort it according to whatever is at the first index. So to do that, we can use a Lambda function. So key equals lambda, we're just going to call a variable called x, and we're going to set that to x at the first index, because we only want to look at our closing times, which are at the first index. So now that we're done with that, we're going to go inside of our for loop, and we're going to check if the opening time, so if interval, whatever is at the zeroth index, that's the opening time, if that's greater than or equal to our closing time. So if that is the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to change our closing value to the new closing value of that list of that interval. So it's going to be interval and whatever is at the first index. So now that's our new closing value. But let's say if that is not the case and our uh, opening time is less than the closing time. then in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to increase our count by one since that's uh, one of, that's going to be an interval which we want to ignore. So we're going to increase our count by one. And by the end of our for loop, we should have iterated through each and every one of the intervals. And we're going to uh, get a value and we're just going to return that count. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. Right, so submit. So I actually made a really small mistake. Uh, the mistake I made was that I made this positive infinity. So to make it negative, you just say negative infinity. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay, now it should work. So submit. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, do let me know if you have any uh, better solution or if you have any questions regarding this video. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.